Hello, uh, my name is uh, Matthew Beard. I'm a senior research fellow at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado. And today I'm receiving the 2021 EO Lawrence Award in the area of atomic molecular and chemical sciences. I am deeply honored and humbled to accept this award on behalf of the many colleagues and postdoctoral researchers, graduate students, and collaborators who have contributed greatly to the science I'm able to pursue at the National Renewable Energy Lab. Their contributions have not only enriched our common scientific pursuits, but also my own life experiences, and I'm deeply grateful to each and every one of my coworkers. I want to thank those colleagues who promoted me for this award, writing letters of support and nomination. And I'd also like to acknowledge reviewers and selection committee, in addition to Secretary Granholm and the many dedicated program managers and staff at the DOE Office of Science. I'm ever impressed by their efforts and passion for the work of the Office of Science and truly grateful to be associated with them. I'm indebted to my colleagues at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory for supporting me, providing the resources for a successful career over the last 19 years. Luckily, the EO Lawrence Award is only a mid-career award, and I look forward to many more productive and fulfilling years. As a graduate student pursuing a PhD in physical chemistry, I was pleasantly surprised to learn in the last year of my thesis work that there was a national laboratory dedicated to the pursuit of a clean and renewable energy future. I was immediately drawn to a place that not only did high-level science, but also had a mission a goal to tackle one of the most daunting and important scientific and societal challenges of our time, providing a clean, affordable energy future. I first came in contact with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and the work of Office of Science through a wonderful scientist, Professor Arthur Nozick, who later became my mentor at the laboratory. Art had a goal and a mission to solve the issue of why solar energy conversion technologies were limited to an energy conversion efficiency of only 30%. Today's commercial solar cell technologies only convert about 22% of the available solar energy resource. Our goal is to understand those limitations and device strategies and systems to go beyond them. My expertise in the, is in the area of ultrafast spectroscopy. To explain, spectroscopy is the study of how light interacts with matter, why are plants green, for example. The ultrafast part comes in because we want to understand how light energy is first absorbed and then converted into chemical or electrical energy. That is, we want to track how energy flows through a system in order to control that flow and transform it into a useful product. We devise systems, usually through chemistry and nanoscience, to prevent those losses. That is, we endeavor to control the energy flow on the molecular scale. We are Most recently, we are interested in hybrid systems that combine the advantages of organic chemistry with those of inorganic chemistry to produce new systems with controllable properties. Science is about learning new things, not through reading books, because the knowledge we seek is not yet written, written or known. We learn new things and then teach that to other scientists in the general uh, public. Uh, one of the more unique and aspect, uh, satisfying aspects of my job is the opportunity to work with and learn from a diverse and dedicated group of scientists. I would like to thank my parents and family for their support and encouraging, encouragement in pursuing a scientific career. In particular, I'm deeply grateful to my wife, Alyssa, and son, Jackson, for their love, support, and friendship and devotion. And I thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Petridge. I'm a staff scientist at Lawrence Livermore Lab and adjunct professor at UC Merced. And I'm just thrilled to be receiving the E.O. Lawrence Award in Biological and Environmental Sciences. I wanna thank the DOE Office of Science for their many years of support, starting when I was a DOE graduate student, throughout my postdoc and my research career, and most recently by my early career award to work on climate change in tropical forests. I so appreciate my nominators at LLNL and the folks who wrote me letters, and in particular, the amazing teams of scientists, technical staff, and students and postdocs who I've worked with over the years. Without them, this really would not have come about. I also want to thank my family, and in particular, my dad, who, as a newspaper editor, really inspired my love of language and appreciation for well-designed graphics. Uh, my mom, who is a horticulture therapist, really taught me to appreciate the connection between healthy people and healthy soil. And then my husband, who shares my love of tropical forest, and he's the one who picks up the balls that I invariably drop. And lastly, my three wonderful daughters, who uh, may sometimes grumble when I am encouraging them to help me with soil sampling and sorting roots, but I hope they secretly love it. <laughs> uh, so speaking of roots, I wanted to say a few words about why they and the soil that surrounds them are so important to the DOE mission. The interface of soil and roots is really the nexus of this just crazy riot of activity between viruses and bacteria and fungi and protists 
And that is all vying for the photosynthetic substrates that, that plants are producing below ground. That's the birthplace of soil carbon. It's this complex potpourri of compounds that um, is really critical to our sustainable agriculture, the ability of soils to produce nutrients, but also to prevent erosion. In the past century, though, we've lost an enormous amount of soil carbon, and we really need to figure out a way to get that carbon out of our atmosphere and back in the ground. So that's what our group studies, and we use isotopes to track carbon molecules as they are moving from plants into roots and into microbes and finally into the soil or back to the atmosphere. Using isotopes allows us to be more quantitative and make microbiome analysis more predictive. But we realize we've got to push forward faster and translate these findings into applied solutions. We're in a climate emergency after all, and we're helping the DOE to find novel approaches to pull CO2 out of the atmosphere and lock it away below ground. In closing, I want to make one more point that I am one of relatively few women to receive this award and very few environmental scientists. I hope that sounds a really important message of where the DOE's priorities are, and I really hope that that's also just the tip of the iceberg for what we're seeing in our research communities, which is more inclusion and more options for diverse voices and talents. Thank you again. I'm honored to accept this year's Lawrence Award in the category of Computing, Information, and Knowledge Sciences. It recognizes my contributions to quantum computing over a 20 plus year career with a host of wonderful collaborators from Sandia, the University of New Mexico, and around the world. I'm pretty sure I'm the first winner of this award in the field of quantum computing, and I look forward to the future when there'll be many, many more. If the 20th century was the information age, the 21st century will be the quantum information age. You only have to look at this year's slate of award winners to see that that's going to be the case. Every single one of their successes relied critically on quantum physics. Photovoltaics, inertial fusion, carbon isotopes, dark matter, polymers, x-rays, electrochemistry. In every one of these fields, plus many, many more, quantum computers will help scientists and engineers take understanding and solution to the next level. And while quantum computers might seem exotic today, much like digital computers must have in the 1950s, they too will transform every aspect of society. Now, my individual contributions are in areas like quantum algorithms and fault-tolerant quantum computing architectures. I've even helped invent new types of quantum bits or qubits and new quantum programming languages. And like Lawrence, I've had the opportunity to lead some exciting big science projects as well. For example, in 2011, I led a project that funded over 80 people to build Sandia's first two quantum computers from scratch. We did it in three years from two completely empty laboratories. The first one processed qubits stored as electrons trapped by lithographically defined silicon quantum dots. The second one processed cesium atoms trapped by lasers engineered to form bottles of pure light. In both cases, these are the first examples in the U.S. outside of a university environment. The work we've done at Sandia has created a bridge from academia to industry that's helped launch several multi-billion dollar U.S. companies. I'm grateful to have been involved in this field from its beginnings, from when I was the first PhD student to enter the field in the U.S., to eventually leading its largest professional society with thousands of members. I'd like to thank my mentors and teachers, my colleagues, postdocs, and students, the support staff at Sandia and UNM, my nominators, reviewers, and letter writers for this award, especially our Sandia Labs Director, Dr. James Peary, who gave me early opportunities to educate and inform policymakers in DC. Of course, I thank my parents and my extended family for their unwavering love and support. And finally, I thank my loving wife, Alyssa, and my wonderful children, William and Sally, whose sacrifices have allowed me to do the exciting work that I do. This is a mid-career award, not the end. So if you'll forgive the hubris, I'd like to quote the musical Hamilton and let you know that, like all my fellow Lawrence Award winners, there's a million things we haven't done. Just you wait.
Hi, I'm Rachel Siegelman. I am this year's E.O. Lawrence Award winner in Condensed Matter and Material Science. Um, this award is for the work my group does in designing polymers, which are very long molecules. And the idea is that the polymer's properties are a result of both the chemistry of the molecule we design and also the way it assembles, the way the polymer arranges with all of the other molecules around it. And what my group really focuses on is how to design the molecule to control those interactions so we get control over this nano or mesoscale that we can't really touch or direct ourselves. And that lane scale really controls the way the molecule behaves, particularly for energy applications, the way it transmits electricity, the way it transmits heat to make a thermoelectric, or for example, the way it might trap a contaminant and let, a, let water go through for water purification. And this is work we've done over a long period of years with a very long-term investment from DOE. And that's a really important element of this award, that E.O. Lawrence was a big advocate for both interdisciplinary science, science that bridges from science engineering, as well as for a realization that science isn't always shovel-ready, that it takes a long-term investment to make the discoveries that eventually lead to product. That long-term investment is also really important to me because I have benefited over a large number of years from interactions with DOE. I was actually a 16-year-old intern at Sandia National Labs as a high school student in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that was my first introduction to how research is done, the puzzles we put together, and to material science as a whole. It also really taught me that part of the great part of doing science is both this collaboration with people with a diversity of backgrounds and also interactions with students and postdocs and staff scientists um, to build those ideas that I would never have thought of on my own. And this award is really towards that large group of people with whom I've interacted over many years, first at Sandia, but also at Lawrence Berkeley Labs, UC Berkeley, where I spent the first decade of my scientific career, and also now at UC Santa Barbara. I'd also like to uh, thank my husband, Tal Margolith, who's been a partner in science and in uh, my personal life, as well as our three children. Lastly, I'd like to congratulate my co-award winners. I'm honored to be amongst you and the DOE. Thank you. My name is Jay Xiao, and I'm a scientist at the Pacific Northwestern National Laboratory. It is an incredible honor to be recognized with the E.O. Lawrence Award bestowed by the Department of Energy. This could not have happened without the tremendous support from my family, my mentors, my colleagues, my students, and many friends. I have been supported by DOE since I was a graduate student supervised by Professor Stan Whittingham. It was with DOE's and Professor Whittingham's support that I started my journey to explore energy science and technology. On September 22nd, but in 2008, which was precisely 14 years ago from today, I was hired by Dr. Jason Zhang at the PL and fortunate to become the first postdoctor on the PL's lab initiative in energy storage. The initiative was led by Dr. Jun Lu and Dr. Judd Verden, who later became my mentors in my career. Dr. Jad Verden is our uh, lab, uh, associate lab director now for Energy and the Environment Directorate. Most of my work at the PNL focuses on addressing scientific challenges to enable new technologies to bring about improved batteries for electric vehicles, batteries that last longer and are less expensive than those available today. Of course, with a better battery, we can use it for many other things, from mobile electronics to sensors, from aviation to grid energy storage. From material synthesis to manufacturing, from natty structural analysis to electrode architectures, from interfacial reactions to cell design and the prototyping, I'm learning new things every day. I have found that only at national labs one can have access to all the different types of experts you need and quickly assemble a great team to work together to address grand scientific challenges and deliver. Our energy storage team at the PL has a tradition of integrating and validating innovations at industry relevant skills to ensure that what we learn or discover is not only scientifically interesting, but it's also adaptable for industry applications. 
I believe it is the combination of innovation and validation that has made my work impactful and based, made this tremendous honor possible. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work with my talented colleagues and students. I look forward to continuing collaborations with the incredible people in our scientific community for a clean energy future. Thank you all. My name is Luis Charcon and I'm currently a senior scientist of International Statue at Los Alamos National Laboratory. I am honored to receive the 2021 Ernesto Lawrence Award in Fusion and Plasma Sciences for research on novel approaches for the simulation of plasma systems towards the goal of manifesting fusion energy on Earth. In this day and age, when global warming is undeniably unfolding in front of our eyes, Fusion energy holds the promise for a clean energy future that may ensure the survivability of our civilization for years to come. Realizing fusion energy in the laboratory is nevertheless a massive undertaking. The sheer complexity of fusion experiments, along with their difficult to predict behavior, puts an emphasis on modeling them to optimize their performance. Building such models is far from trivial, however, as the corresponding governing equations are devilishly hard to solve. It is to this goal that I've devoted and will continue to devote my career and the reason I am receiving this award today. As the old adage goes, it takes a village to raise a child. The same is true for a scientist as one does not develop in isolation. It takes a village of peers, mentors and mentees for a scientist to come of age from the early days of grad school to his full professional potential. A scientist literally stands on the shoulders of giants, those that came before him and those that are walking along with them. This is all definitely true in my case, and as such, I am indebted to my mentors, my peers, and the students and postdocs that have walked along beside me in this adventure, all of whom have participated and contributed in a fundamental way to my research accomplishments. I am also indebted to my scientific home for most of my career, Los Alamos National Laboratory, for the growth and research opportunities that it has afforded me and foreseeing that potential that many times we ourselves are blind to. I am further grateful for the long-term support that I have received from the DOE Office of Science, and in particular the Offices of Science of Applied Scientific Computing Research and Fusion Energy Sciences, without which I would not stand here today. To conclude, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the support of my immediate family, my wife, Isabella, and my sons, Carlos, Miguel, and Javier, who have tolerated my research obsessions and occasional mood swings with the in inevitable ups and downs of research life with grace and understanding. And that provided me an anchor that has kept me steady and true. Finally, I would also like to acknowledge my extended family and in particular my parents, Luis and Rosario, who took the sacrifice of seeing their son leave for a new life in a new continent with patience and pride, as well as my extended family members, including those that came before them, whose sacrifices and hard work unlocked opportunities for me that they could not even dream of and that have allowed me to become what I am today. Hello, my name is Philip Schuster, and I'm honored to receive an E.O. Lawrence Award in High Energy Physics jointly with Natalia Toro. I work on both theoretical and experimental high energy physics, which aims to provide an understanding of the constituents of matter and the principles that govern them. A short century ago, the forefront of this field was the study of light and its interactions with the atom, which uncovered the principles of quantum mechanics and relativity and pointed the way to controlling matter in remarkable ways. This ushered in the rise of particle accelerators as the unique telescope in, in the atomic and subatomic world, a setting in which elementary laws of physics become more readily apparent. Lawrence himself played a pivotal role in the development of these devices, and through the second half of the last century, accelerator experiments demonstrated that new fundamental forces dominate physics deep inside atoms and are at the heart of the power source of stars, the synthesis of elements, and more. The building blocks of matter were also found to have a rich structure suggestive of new principles. Revealing this physics continues today with DOE-supported efforts at the Large Hadron Collider, the world's most powerful accelerator, and part of my past research recognized by this award was for the development of theoretical methods using simplified models to help search 
for new physics and experiments at this facility. Another aspect of my research is related, but is focused on experiments to study dark matter and new forces at a broader set of accelerator facilities. Dark matter refers to the matter that dominates the universe, inferred through gravity from decades of astronomical measurements, though it has yet to be identified in laboratory experiments. Its existence offers compelling reason to think we're only seeing a small piece of nature's building blocks. Given how known matter works, a natural and exciting possibility is that dark matter is made up of particles roughly as heavy as familiar electrons or protons with their own entirely new forces. This motivates new experiments and offers a shining example of how DOE's facilities are at the vanguard of fundamental physics today, operating some of the only instruments anywhere in the world capable of producing or detecting dark matter of this type in the lab. Part of the work recognized by this award is focused on the design and deployment of such experiments, and these efforts cut across the Office of Science Disciplines, as accelerators operated primarily for basic energy sciences, nuclear physics, as well as high energy, all have a unique and important role to play in this endeavor. I'm eager to see what these experiments teach us. I owe thanks to many, my mom, dad, and brother, who always supported and encouraged me, my friends and teachers and PhD advisor for reinforcing the view that this is no ordinary science and no ordinary job. A special thanks to my many collaborators and colleagues over the years. I owe a lot to one particularly close collaborator of nearly 20 years, my wife, Natalia. And finally, a heartfelt thanks to my best little friend, our daughter, Maddie. I'm Natalia Toro, a professor of particle physics and astrophysics at Slack National Accelerator Laboratory at Stanford University. And I'm incredibly honored to be recognized by an E.O. Lawrence Award in the field of high energy physics, as well as delighted to share it with my longtime collaborator and husband, Philip Schuster. This award recognizes the role the two of us have played in devising new approaches to both data analysis and small scale experiments to address fundamental questions about the nature and interactions of matter. High energy physics can often seem remote from everyday life, and yet the puzzles that drive our field are foundational to the world we live in. One of the key challenges in fundamental science today is understanding the properties of dark matter. Dark matter quite literally shapes our universe, laying the foundation for the growth of the Milky Way galaxy and all the stars inside it, including our own sun. We know there's five times more dark matter in our universe than there is of the atomic matter that we, our planet and our sun are all made of. And yet, while we've come to understand familiar matter in exquisite detail and harness it to change our lives, we're still looking for the beginning of the story of how dark matter works. To find the opening page of this story, we need to think broadly about where and how to look for dark matter, exploring several possibilities in parallel and using innovative techniques and new technologies. Now is an extraordinary moment for this science when several powerful new approaches to searching for dark matter are coming into their own leveraging the Department of Energy's investments in modern accelerators, cutting edge detector technology, and quantum sensing. My own work in this area follows E.O. Lawrence's legacy of using particle accelerators to learn more about what our universe is made of. Both the highest energy colliders and exquisitive, exquisitely sensitive experiments at lower energy accelerators offer windows to aspects of our universe that nobody has been able to study before. By leveraging SLAC's second generation Linac coherent light source accelerator and detector technologies developed for the Large Hadron Collider, we can look for dark matter particles with mass similar to electrons or protons with tiny couplings to familiar matter, testing compelling explanations for dark matter's origins. Realizing these and other experiments will bring us closer to understanding what most of our universe is made of and addressing whatever new questions come into sharp focus once we have uncovered the nature of dark matter. I want to close by thanking the many collaborators who have explored these avenues with me and Philip, and especially the LDMX collaboration. My PhD advisor, who sparked my interest in using both collider data and dark matter as windows on big questions about nature, my incredibly supportive parents, and my daughter, Madeline, who simultaneously keeps me grounded and kindles my sense of wonder. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel Sinars. I am the director for the Pulse Power Sciences Center at Sandia National Laboratories. I'm very pleased to have won a 2021 E.O. Lawrence Award in National Security and Nonproliferation. My career as a practicing scientist has largely been based on the use of pulsed power technology. 
Here at Sandia, my center is the home of the world's largest pulsed power machine, which we affectionately call the Z-Machine. The Z-Machine is a way to deliver 80 terawatts and several megajoules of electrical energy in a short burst lasting a few billionths of a second. That's a peak power equivalent to about 20 times the continuous generating capacity of all the world's power plants and an energy equivalent to a couple of sticks of dynamite delivered to a target about the size of my fingertip. We use the extreme pressures we create with this power and energy to create conditions similar to those produced in or by nuclear weapons. Facilities like the Z-Machine are used to test and improve our capabilities for stewarding our nuclear deterrent. They are also vital for training and testing the people who are responsible for understanding and maintaining our nuclear weapons. So what did I do to contribute to our nation's nuclear security? My primary role as a scientist was the study of Z-Pinch implosions. When we use electrical current to compress matter, we call it a Z-Pinch. During graduate school, I used small pulse power machines to study how Z-Pinch implosions worked. I made several innovative measurements of these processes and the extreme conditions we were creating in the laboratory. When I came to Sandia in 2001, I spent the first 10 years of my career developing and applying new tools for measuring Z-Pinch implosions. I collaborated with many other excellent scientists and engineers at all three of the NNSA laboratories to demonstrate and diagnose new Z-Pinch implosion platforms that support our nation's nuclear deterrent. I was privileged to be part of many new platforms and measurements that have revolutionized what we can do with the Z-Machine. I could not have received this honor without the tremendous support of literally hundreds of people over the years, and in a three-minute video, I can't possibly name them all. My mother and father played a key role in encouraging me to pursue my dreams. In particular, my mom never let me use my hearing loss, diagnosed at age four, as an excuse for not succeeding. And my wife, Cindy, has been a stalwart supporter of me, and I am incredibly grateful for all the sacrifices she has made so that I can pursue my scientific career. I'm incredibly inspired to receive this award. Today, I don't do much in the way of hands-on science because I've gone into technical management within the national laboratories. Nonetheless, I find inspiration in E.O. Lawrence, who is often described as the father of team science and for whom two of our 17 DOE national laboratories is named. I hope that in the future, I can live up to his example as a leader and allow future scientists and engineers to continue supporting this great nation of ours. Thank you. My name is Sofia Quaglioni, and I'm a physicist and group leader in the Nuclear and Chemical Sciences Division at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. I'm incredibly honored to be this year's E.O. Lawrence Award winner in nuclear physics and wish to congratulate all other 2021 recipients. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the Secretary and to the Office of Nuclear Physics for supporting my research for the past 16 years. I'm also deep, deeply grateful for the great mentors and very supportive, collaborative, intellectually stimulating environment of Lawrence Livermore Lab that always encouraged me to think big and motivated me to push the boundaries of what was possible. I would like to acknowledge the students, postdocs and colleagues that have collaborated with me and sharing this achievement. Lastly, I would like to recognize my parents, my husband Jerome and son Leon and Filippo. Without their unconditional support and sacrifices, I could have never reached this illustrious milestone. Inside each atom in our bodies and in the matter all around us, there is a nucleus. Atomic nuclei are made of protons and neutrons. Different combinations of protons and neutrons can give rise to a wide variety of phenomena. These range from stable nuclei that form the, um, uh, the familiar elements of everyday life to exotic nuclei only existing for a fleeting moment produced in state-of-the-art laboratories such as the DOE facility for the rare isotope beams. They even include the nuclear reactions that power the stars and drive the evolution of our universe. Arriving at a comprehensive and predictive understanding of how such a wide range of phenomena emerges from the laws of quantum mechanics and the interactions of protons and neutrons is an overarching goal of nuclear physics and of the Department of Energy. For a long time, a seemingly insurmountable obstacle toward achieving this goal was the disconnect between the microscopic description of the structure of static nuclei and the theory used to model nuclear reactions. Today, I am being recognized for my seminar contributions in closing this divide. By combining first principle calculations with cutting edge high performance computing, my collaborators and I have been able to describe quantitatively and predictively difficult to measure thermonuclear reactions among the lightest element. 
These include reaction rates during the Big Bang, in the interior of our Sun, and interstellar fusion experiments. Our calculations also enabled a more fundamental understanding of light exotic nuclei, including fragile state of one or two neutrons orbiting a tightly bound core at surprisingly extended distances. First principle simulations of nuclear dynamics require an astonishing amount of computing resources. I have been very fortunate to work at a time of extraordinary advances in supercomputing, driven in large part by DOE investment. The emergence of several prototypes of quantum computers is now opening the tantalizing opportunity of exact predictions of nuclear dynamical processes that span the entire nuclear landscape and govern the behavior of nuclear weapons and the evolution of stars. Working in a national laboratory gave me the exciting opportunity to join a multidisciplinary team of quantum hardware experts and other nuclear theorists and lay the groundwork for the application of quantum computing to the simulation of nuclear dynamics.